different countries have different cultures culture means the behavior and ideas held by a group of people different people living on different parts of the world have different belief systems and they lead very different lives i know crazy concept first of all why do you need to know about this concept if you are a manager that manages a lot of people it will be immensely beneficial to know how you can motivate your employees better some will be motivated by money some by recognition this theory is a great way to figure out the inherent motivating factors of each employees and if you are the manager of a big company that wants to reach a global market you need to know how to influence the people of every specific location properly if you want to be successful there are some limitations of this theory but i will talk about them later on now let's move on intro this is the person you need to know about he came up with this theory the problem here is i don't know how to pronounce his name the professor that taught me in my class said geert hofstede i have found out some other people saying hofsted and another group of people saying hofstede so apologies in advance geert hofsted that's what i will call him from now on his full name is gerard hendrik hofsted he was a brilliant man sadly he passed away recently 12 february 2020 anyway the main idea he came up with is that you have to know about other people and their cultures if you want to be successful in this globalized world of business and there are six particular dimensions that you can identify between different cultures they are power distance collectivism versus individualism uncertainty avoidance index femininity versus masculinity short term versus long term orientation restraint versus indulgence before moving on with the dimensions remember the dimensions are a scale not two side of a coin meaning it does not deal with extremes there is a scale and you are going to fall somewhere on that scale it won't be that you are either this or that now that is clear let's move on i will start with masculinity and femininity first of all it does not mean male and female the name is chosen to show emotional characteristics in a masculine culture people prefer to achieve more and value their material accomplishments in a feminine culture people prefer a better quality of life over all that in a masculine culture your work will come before your family in a feminine culture family is first so in one case you can use the probability of a promotion or more responsibility on the job to motivate the employees and in the other case you can motivate them by giving them more vacation time you have to choose carefully though and that is all i'm going to talk about this point some people might not like the way it was named but it is what it is next i'd like to talk about is power distance there are hierarchies everywhere there are hierarchies the thing with power distance is that are the people in that hierarchy happy with that hierarchy the people at the bottom that is the lower level employees are they satisfied enough with the fact 
that the top level managers have all of the decision making powers and they have to follow it blindly or do they want to be a part of the decision making process if there is a high power distance there and you are a top level manager you can do whatever you want wait not whatever you want actually you can do whatever it is good for your company and the people working in your company without really consulting with any lower level managers or employees these people respect authority and if there is a low power distance index present well you need to stop the mutiny first involve them in the decision making process show them that they are an important part of the organization by having a decentralized decision making system well the last words are going to be yours of course but you need to keep your employees happy and if you want to do whatever you want here you need to do a lot more convincing than the people that are in the opposite end of the spectrum next we have uncertainty avoidance there are uncertainty avoiding societies societies of people that do not like to be in uncertain situations in situations where they don't really know what is going to happen in the future and on the other hand there are people that are uncertainty accepting societies these people embrace the uncertain times the fact of the matter is uncertain times do come from time to time it is just inevitable the people that are avoidant of uncertainties are going to be more stressed than the people that embrace uncertainties one more point uncertainty avoidance does not mean risk avoidance you can be uncertainty avoidant but if you plan out your course of action properly you are going to be more willing to take risks the people that do not like uncertainty are more likely to embrace rules they like rules everywhere these rules are going to tell them what to do and what not to do the next point i am going to talk about is long term versus short term orientation long term orientation is about looking at the future people with long term orientation will try to make decisions based on what they think will be best for them in the future they will display patience and try to secure a better future for themselves even if everything is not absolutely perfect for them at the present moment on the other hand people with short term orientation will want success in the near future in the short term they don't really want instant gratification but they will not tolerate hardships for a long period of time just thinking that things will get better in the future i don't think there is much to talk about long term and short term orientations it is pretty straightforward the next point i am going to talk about is individualism versus collectivism yeah individualist people think about their own goals and achievements and they are sometimes likely to look out for their immediate family that is your parents and children collectivistic people are going to think about themselves as well as their family extended family society the people living in their city etc that is the difference individualists are going to see if whatever they are doing is going to give them the best outcome or not collectivists are going to see if whatever they are doing is going to give themselves as well as the people around them the best outcome or not when working in groups individualist society will look at the task first their goal is to complete the task first 
and maintain a proper relationship with the group members later. On the other hand, in collectivist societies, the relationship with the group members will come first. Task will also be there, but relationship first. Individualistic people will compete with everyone else around the world. Because everyone else is an individual in their eyes. But collectivistic people will compete with other groups. That is, they have their own tribe and they will try to compete with other tribes. The next point and the last point I'm going to talk about is indulgence versus restraint. In indulgent societies, people are more likely to have fun. They prefer enjoying their life over other values. These people are likely to be more optimistic. Then there are societies that suppress their gratification. They are likely to be rigid rule following people and they can be a little pessimistic about things. Once again, let me reiterate, it will not be an extreme case in any country or society. No country will fall under any extreme side. It is not black and white. They will fall somewhere on the spectrum. And in the beginning, I have said that there are some criticisms to this theory. Let's talk about them a little bit. First of all, you cannot really put everyone from one specific country in one specific category. There are people in a single country that will have individualistic value and there will be people in the same country that will have collectivistic value. And with the rapid change of technology, the cultures are actually getting mixed up very easily. So, the cultural value of the people of a specific country in 1980 is going to be far different now. That culture is not going to be the same. Because of technology, other cultures are likely to get mixed up between there. This is a recent criticism though. And that is all for this topic from me today. People are different and that is okay. One person will say individualism is better. Another person will say collectivism is better. It is good to have a healthy discourse. There are going to be different opinions out there all the time. That is the beauty of it all. And now you can like, share, subscribe and everything else. All of those things are going to be helpful for me. But if you want to directly support whatever it is I am doing with this channel, you can support me on Patreon. The link will be in the description section below. And for bonus, I would like to cheat a little. Usually my bonus section is about something completely unrelated to the main content of the video. But today for bonus, Hofsted was actually a management trainer at IBM, International Business Machines. What Hofsted did was take a survey of over 100,000 people working for IBM in 70 different countries. It was only possible because IBM is a such a huge presence in the market. And all of this happened before 1980, mind you. Now, this is the official end of this video. Thank you so much for watching if you are still watching. You know what? If you are still watching, comment below saying I did it. So what? Or something. I don't know. Now, lastly, I hope you have learned something new today. Goodbye for now.